Humble servanthood is an invitation to be transformed. It is a call of faithful service to share God's redeeming love. With one heart, one mind, one soul, and one student at a time, we journey our transformation with the Venerable's guiding presence all the way. Ignacio del Espiritu Santo is a Chinese mestiza. His father was Giuseppe Luco from Amoy, China, and her mother was Jeronima, an India from Bonanto, Manila. The Philippines was almost a century old. Spanish colony when Mother Foundress was born. The social milieu pervading at that time was that of racial prejudice and discrimination among the natives, whose conversion to Catholicism has hardly begun. Ignacia was baptized on March 4, 1663 at the Church of the Holy King of Parian by a Dominican missionary father, Alberto Colare, Ordinus Praticatorum. It was customary among pious parents of that time to give their children devotional names at baptism, so, Del Espiritu Santo, truly became real in life, when she exemplified a life of prayer discernment, and Holy Spirit-driven actions and decisions. She was reared by loving and affluent parents. As a child, she could have everything she had wanted especially education, but women during her time were not given equal opportunity as a person's to improve their social standing. However, that situation did not hinder her from obtaining an education which gave her lifelong lessons. Her home became her school and her parents were her teachers. She was taught by them through good examples. She had her share of work both in their house and business. There was no idle moment for her she imbibed her father's hard work, humility, patience and endurance along with her mother's strong faith in God, courage and simplicity. Ignacia grew up as a young lady imbued by the values of her parents. Her love of God was nurtured through prayers, receiving the sacraments and devotion to the Blessed Mother and the Saints. She was living a comfortable life. When she reached the age of 21, her parents wanted her to marry a good young man of their choice. At this stage of her life, she prayed to God invoking the Holy Spirit to guide her to the path she should tread. Her decision was not done in haste. In prayer and solitude, she went on a retreat with the guidance of Father Paul Klein, a Jesuit priest. From these she resolved to live by the sweat of her brow, despite the fact that she still had parents who could support her. She courageously told her parents of her decision to live a life in service to the Lord. She broke the custom observed by the women of her time which was just to get married and stay at home. In 1684 she started to live a solitary life which attracted other young women and this started the foundation of the group known as Betas. They lived an exemplary life of prayer, penance and devotion to the service of God as a community of religious women. Mother Ignacia led the Betas in the education of children and women. They did not confine themselves to prayer, they were aware of what was happening outside. The social climate during that time was of racial injustice and discrimination. Living under such a climate, Mother Ignacia together with the Betas, started to seek the Lord's will in the situations confronting them. She dreamed of a generation that is living the truth and not enslaved in its very own native land. This was a radical move because religious life then, was in many ways monastic, protected by convent walls and cloistered grills. Mother Ignacia and her Betas did not conform their ways to what was expected of religious women at that time. Mother Ignacia listened to the Holy Spirit, who directed her every action. While doing their work outside, Mother Ignacia and the Betas continued living a frugal life. They existed almost only on rice with little salt, eating under the moonlight to save oil for their lamps. With deep humility and full trust in God's loving providence and coupled with their ingenuity and resourcefulness, they survived the challenges of life. In all these difficulties, Mother Ignacia exhorted her companions to bear with constancy and make penance as their way of imploring God's mercy. Hardships did not diminish the love and courage of the Betas to go on serving God through their service to the people. Their community even became bigger, as more young women wished to live the exemplary life of prayer and penance. Mother Ignacia herself bore a heavy cross on her shoulders. Sometimes she prostrated on the ground for others to step on her. She extended her arms in the form of a cross under the heat of the noonday sun. Her examples moved others to follow her. 
Every night they used the discipline of sleeping very little and spent most their time in prayer. Upon seeing that the rigors of their penance had weakened the Betas, she advised them to be moderate in their discipline. Indeed, Mother Ignatius' concern for them was felt and seen. Several years before she died, she gave the leadership of the foundation to Mother Dominga del Rosario and took her place among the ranks of the ordinary. Truly, she exemplified humble servitude. Mother Ignacia died on September 10, 1748 at the age of 85. At the time of her death, she received the honor and recognition which was denied during her lifetime. Today, Mother Ignacia lives in the spirit and heart of the religious of the Virgin Mary, RVM, a religious congregation of women which started from her humble example. The sisters are actively participating in God's mission of proclaiming the good news through various apostolates, education, pastoral and social ministry, retreat movements, seminary, and dormitory apostolates in the Philippines and foreign mission. Cardinal Pironio, on December 8, 1983, wrote to the Superior General, The Mary not only testifies of God's blessings to your institute, it is also giving witness to a truly religious life as well as fulfilling the services to the church intended by Mother Ignacia. Now her life is a source of inspiration to all people who have shared and continue to share in her charism, the religious of the Virgin Mary, and the people whose lives they touch. She is truly the light that illumines our way, the way which leads to God.